picture this, it's a beautiful day and you're cruising down the road, happy to be out of the office and you're hugging the turns and you're gaining speed and you're going downhill. Now you're going so fast you can't go slow down. Somebody stop me. <sighs> Brake pads. Some people say brakes are just as important as your engine. There, I said it. Jeez, feels good to get that off my chest. Without brakes, you don't just crash into each other all the time. Well, it sounds pretty fun. Doesn't make much sense if you're trying not to be dead. Most of us have disc brakes on the car, but the disc is only half of what's needed to stop your car. The other half is the pad. So as technology advances, the materials we use for brake pads changes drastically. Bertha Benz of Mercedes-Benz fame gets credit for inventing the first brake pads. And they were leather. That was in 1888. The first disc brakes used in production were in a car made in 1902 by the Lanchester Company. It had thin copper pads that wore down quickly from dust and dirt, and really they were pretty useless. The idea didn't really catch on until 50 years later when the Jaguar team won the 1953 Le Mans, demonstrating the superiority of disc brakes over drum brakes. So, the brake pad, or shoe as it's sometimes called, is made up of a solid metal backing with a brake lining, which is a relatively soft but tough material with a high coefficient of dynamic friction. The job of the brake pad is to convert the kinetic energy of the vehicle to thermal energy through friction. When the driver presses on the pedal, two brake pads contained in the caliper are hydraulically clamped around the rotor. Nope. Think of a crab pinching a spinning quarter. When the pads come into contact with the rotor, they create heat, and that results in a small amount of residual material being left on the disc. This material allows the pads and the rotor to stick together. Brakes create friction in one of two ways, abrasive friction and adherent or adhesive friction. Thinking about abrasive friction, let's move away from brake pads and think instead about sandpaper. You know why sandpaper is abrasive? It's because it wears down what it's rubbing. On the other hand, when the brake pad comes into contact with the rotor, that abrasive friction causes a lot of heat and is pretty destructive. It gradually wears down the rotor. Adherent friction is what happens when a thin layer of the brake pad bonds to the rotor through the process of heat and friction. When the brake pad presses on the rotor, it essentially sticks to the residue that it's left on the surface. Higher end brake pad use more adherent friction because it's less destructive and the rotors last longer. All right, dynamic friction coefficient is a measurement of how effective a brake is. We talk about the forces on the pad and then the force on the rotor. The force on the rotor is called brake force. To figure out the dynamic friction coefficient, we're gonna compare the two. If the brake puts a force of 1,000 newtons on the pad and the resulting brake force is 400 newtons, then the dynamic friction coefficient, or DFC, is point Four. A normal commercial brake pad has a dynamic friction coefficient of around 0.35 to 0.42. Some high-end racing brake pads can achieve a DFC of 0.62, and that's keeping a lot more force. Most consumer brake pads have a cool feature called a warning tang, and as we know, the warning tang clan ain't nothing to mess with. So if your brake pad's worn down, these little metal strips will scratch against the rotor and let you know, in the most annoying way possible, and you need new brake pads. Materials used to make linings on brake pads have evolved to be the most durable, most efficient, most brake paddy. These materials must be able to withstand extremely high temperatures and tons of friction in order to function properly. Asbestos used to be used in brake pads for a long time because of its ability to dissipate heat extremely well. It's since been discontinued due to its harmful effects on health. Wait, asbestos has harmful effects on health? <laughs> now you tell me. Modern day brake pads come in many different types depending on how durable you need them to be or how much you want to spend. There's four common categories of brake pad linings. Organic, semi-metallic, full metallic, and ceramic. And some are so expensive, they're usually only reserved for race cars or DJ Khaled. So, you got an old car that needs brakes and you don't really feel like sinking a lot of money into it? Organic brake pads sound great. These brake liners are made of materials like glass, Kevlar, fiber, rubber, and resin because all those compounds can withstand high heat and they're relatively inexpensive to produce. The heat actually helps the materials bond together 
tighter. You wanna know the coolest thing in a lot of organic brake pads? Cashew. Cashew containing friction dust has the ability to absorb the heat created by friction while retaining braking efficiency. Organic brake pads were designed as an alternative to asbestos pads. They're quiet, they're easy on the brake rotors, and one of the softer brake pad materials. They don't need much heat to generate good friction, and they produce a minimal amount of brake dust. There's a couple of downsides, but that's life, get used to it. Organic brake pads wear more quickly than other brake pads. They also have a high compressibility because of their softness, which can cause a mushy feeling while braking. It's gonna lose some of that brake force, and that's why it's got a lower dynamic friction coefficient. But for normal use, you still get a pretty good break for your buck. Oh, you suck. It's a funny joke. All right, now let's cut one open to see what it's made of. Uh, we didn't get the pads yet. Hey, what, I gotta do everything around here? Sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, uh, hey. You know, I watched one of your shows. Yeah, what'd you think? You spelled diesel wrong. I know. Um, Anyway, uh, what can I do for you? Can I get a, a brake pad, please? Okay, what kind? I'm gonna cut it open, so. Oh, okay. I'll be right back. Got your brake pad for you, right? Wonderful. Here. That's spelled B-R-A-K-E. Thank you. You're welcome. See you in a week. All right. Okay, so Anthony just sold me some organic brake pads. We're gonna cut it open and see what it looks like and how long it takes to do so. There. So again, it's a mix of a bunch of different stuff, but we got through it pretty quickly. I'm excited to see how the speed at which we cut through the pad is going to compare with the other two types of pads we're going to cut into. So if you've ever seen a brake pad, you've probably noticed that there's a little angle on the edge. Zach, get out of the lab. That's a chamfer. Let's talk about that. If the surface of the brake lining's not perfectly aligned with the surface of the rotor, it can cause some problems. And that could be because of debris or maybe it was installed improperly. The extra vibration usually translates into more noise. One way engineers deal with this when they design the brake pad is through chamfers. A chamfer is an angled cut on either end of the pad that controls how the edge of the pad reacts when it's pressed against the rotor. This cut ensures the largest amount of surface area touching the rotor, cutting down vibration and in turn, cutting down noise. Okay, so you got rid of your old beater. You trade it up for a nice mid-sized luxury car. Good for you! You got a good deal, but it needs new brakes. You wanna spend a little more on your pads. So you go with semi-metallic. These brake pads are made up of anywhere between 30 to 65% metals, like steel, iron. These are tough metals that can handle a lot of heat. And the rest is made up of friction modifiers, like fillers and resins, as well as graphite lubricant. These are materials that bond together and dissipate heat well. These are arguably the most versatile of brake pads. They last a long time and provide better performance than organic pads. They do, however, produce a little more noise and a little more dust. Okay, now let's cut one open. Eddie, give me the semi-metallic brake pad. Uh, I swear to God, Eddie, if I gotta go back, this guy's gonna think I'm an idiot. Hey, me again, Anthony. Uh, I'm hoping I can return this. I'm looking for something a little bit more high performance. Oh, totally. Returns are easy and simple. It sure feels like Nolan. You know, I had to get these out of the back. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It sure feels like no one, doesn't it? You think he's got a brother? Anyways, Anthony gave me this semi-metallic brake pad. This type of brake pad's got a little bit higher level of metallic components, so we're gonna do what we do. So I got a new blade and a new pad. Let's see how it does. Got it! This is the semi-metallic, and it did take a little bit longer than the organic to get through this top part till we got to the sparks. And you can see a slight difference. Down here, that's the tang. So if you hit that, it's gonna squeal by design. That means you need new brakes. It's cool, man. Pretty sick. 
some things that are unavoidable when it comes to any type of brake pad are dust and the gas produced by superheated pads. There's no way around it, like your mom in a hallway. These things can be detrimental for brake pads, causing a drop in efficiency and lopsided wear. If too much gas builds up, the pads aren't going to get a solid contact with the rotor. Remember, we're turning kinetic energy into thermal energy. And if the brakes can't dissipate the heat and they get too hot, they can't stop the kinetic energy. Slots in the brake pads let the dust and hot gases escape without causing pressure or extra heat. They can also relieve some friction and reduce vibration. And that means... Quieter brakes! And now, wouldn't you know it, you get bored with that luxury car. You trade it in for a high-end sports car, and boy, that thing is fast. But the mechanic says, it needs new brakes. <laughs> Can't catch a brake, am I right? All right, this time, you decide to shell out some serious cash for some brake pads. So you go with ceramic. Ceramic just means a solid, inorganic compound, like a brick or porcelain. This type of pad has a longer life than organic and semi-metallic pads, and it's also pretty quiet. And the dust they produce is light and doesn't stick to wheels. The downside is that ceramic pads are super expensive. Let's cut one of those open. Eddie, so help me gosh, if there isn't a ceramic brake pad in this office, I'm gonna be upset. Uh... Oh man, oh man. Oh. Do you actually think he's mad? Yeah, I think he's mad. I've never seen him like this. No, he's not mad. Bart doesn't get mad. How was I supposed to know? I don't know. Eddie, I think you really dropped the ball on this. Oh, you know what? I just found it. I have the ceramic pad. He's gonna be pissed. Uh, uh, what do you want me to do? Get rid of it. Uh... Just be cool. Act normal. Act normal. I'm sorry, guys. That wasn't that big of a deal. I kind of flew off the handle. No harm, no foul. So this is a higher performance ceramic break. It's a little bit different composition. I got a new blade, new brake pad. Let's see. Hold on. Hello? It's Pep Boys. Anthony, how you doing? Oh. Yeah, I, no, I, I forgot I actually cut that in half. Okay. Same card, just put on the same card. Yeah. All right, we'll see you soon, buddy. See, it looks like there's actually a little bit more copper. So as you can see, cutting into it, I think it came apart pretty quick because all these brakes are designed to wear. You want the brake to wear, not the rotor. Brake pad. There are, of course, other types of brake pads that we didn't cover. Full metal brake pads are just that. They're fully metal. But as you can imagine, they're not very good for daily use. Imagine metal on metal. That's, you know, that's bad. Right? Oh, but then we can't finish an episode without talking about the holy grail of brake pads. Carbon ceramic. These pads are the best when it comes to performance, weight, and the ability to handle heat. They come standard on very few high-end production cars, but they're common in drag racing and aviation. When things are going so super fast that they need to stop even super -mer quick. I'm not gonna cut one open, because I can't afford one of the dang old things. Carbon fiber brakes can cost upward of $10,000. That's more than my house. I live in a shipping container. This button's a subscription button. You know where you don't need brakes? Drag racing in the desert. What a dumb idea. Check out this video. It's rad. We got new stuff coming out. If it's the holidays, you need to go to shop.donut.media. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Donut Media and follow me at Bids Bardell. I take pictures of stuff and tell stories. Don't tell my wife I forgot to pay for that stuff at Pep Boys.